Link TV presents Mosaic World News from the Middle East. Here are today's top stories. Soldiers seize power in Mali and suspend the constitution. Afghanistan's Karzai calls on NATO to end deadly night raids. And assault of Bahraini child sparks angry anti-regime protests. Mosaic, world news from the Middle East begins now. The United States called for an immediate re-establishment of constitutional rule in Mali. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney announced his country's support for President Amadou Toumani Torres' government. The community of West African states and the European Union also condemned the coup. Army mutineers announced the downfall of the regime and suspension of the constitution imposing a curfew throughout the country. They accused Torres' government of failing to contain the Tuareg rebellion in the northern part of the country. Sources loyal to the Malian president indicated he's being protected by the presidential guard in a military camp in Bamako. The coup in Mali was sparked by the anger of members of a military base near the capital of Bamako over the government's failure to supply them with arms and necessary equipment to face the Tuareg rebellion in the north. The defense minister failed to contain the anger that turned into a rebellion and then into a coup accompanied by the takeover of state radio and television. They then seized the presidential palace and announced a curfew. After taking control of large areas of the Malian capital Bamako, the leaders of the coup introduced themselves on state television as the National Committee for the Restoration of Democracy in State, or CNRDR. The television station's signals had been cut off for several hours. They announced the suspension of the constitution and the dissolution of government institutions until further notice. They vowed to form a new government after consulting with all the representatives of the nation. Our goal is not to seize power. We promise to hand back power to a democratically elected president as soon as this country is reunified and its safety is no longer threatened. The statement did not speak of the fate of the deposed president, Amandou Toumani Touré, who has ruled Mali for the past decade and was set to step down after the elections next month. The coup in the capital Bamako echoed in the northern part of the country. Military sources confirmed the arrest of a number of high-ranking officers during a rebellion on a military base in the northern city of Gao, which is a regional center for military operations. Mali is located in West Africa and is a former French colony. It gained its independence in 1960. It's well known for its production of gold and cotton and for its northern part located in the Sahara Desert. Although it has had a relatively stable government for the past few years, the country has experienced some unrest. Last month, the capital Bamako was crippled by protests after the government failed to confront the rebellion of the Tuareg tribes, who aspired to gain independence in the country's north and whose power was enhanced after the return of their comrades from Libya. They have been involved in clashes with Malian forces since the end of last year, in which dozens of Malian soldiers were killed and nearly 200,000 civilians were displaced. Meanwhile, Afghan President Hamid Karzai says his government is pressing for a stop to U.S.-led forces. Night raids on Afghan homes. Kabul and Washington are busy negotiating a long-term deal at the moment. An agreement was signed between Afghanistan and the United States that no foreigner can take prisoners or have a prison in Afghanistan. Afghan law should be implemented. Right now, we are working to ban and stop night raids on Afghan homes. The security of Afghanistan must be provided by the sons of Afghanistan and according to Afghanistan's constitution. The Washington-sponsored deal calls for U.S. presence in Afghanistan 
beyond 2014. Now, this is when most U.S.-led foreign soldiers must leave the country. The deal is yet to be finalized as major disputes remain. One sticking point is the night raid by U.S.-led forces, which Kabul wants to be stopped. Now, the raids, however, continue despite repeated warnings by the Afghan government. A large number of Afghan civilians have been killed in the U.S. raids. Now turning to Yemen, where protesters there have taken to the streets in several cities across the country, calling for the execution of the Po's ruler, Ali Abdullah Saleh. The protesters also demanded that all former deputies and aides to Saleh be sacked. Now they also want what they call the cleansing of the government. Yemenis have long called for the trial of Saleh and his aides. Now they hold them responsible for the killing of nearly 2,000 protesters since their revolution began over a year ago. Saleh was replaced by his deputy after a single candidate presidential election backed by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. Now, the protesters accuse Washington and Riyadh of trying to put an end to their revolution. Well, Lebanon's military court has charged a Lebanese man with smuggling weapons to armed gangs, fighting the Syrian government. Now, the man was arrested after attempting to smuggle the arms across the border region of al qa in the Beka Valley. Now, the Syrian government has called on Lebanese authorities to hand in the fugitive armed men who have reportedly fled to Lebanon. The incident has prompted Lebanon army commander to visit the Lebanese-Syrian border to discuss the measures that are required to secure the common borders. Early we talked to our Beirut correspondent Ali Rizk about the incident and here's what he had to tell us. Well, of course, the issue of uh, smuggling weapons from the Lebanese border into Syria or to the Syrian opposition has become something which we're accustomed to. Of course, it began ever since the Syrian crisis began to unfold uh, just about a year ago, last March, in March 2011. Uh, we're all aware that uh, the Syrian President Bashar Assad and the Syrian government does have its fair share of enemies here in Lebanon, most notably the March 14 movement, uh, Saad Hariri, who considers Bashar Assad to be one of his arch enemies, considers Bashar Assad to be one of those people who contributed to ousting or toppling the Hariri government. Uh, uh, however, this uh, latest event does show that the Lebanese military is trying to increase the steps which it is taking. It has to be said here as well that the Lebanese army commander visited both the eastern and northern border areas with Syria just yesterday, the Lebanese army commander, General John Kahawaji, and such a visit does reveal the political decision which the Lebanese government has taken to really clamp down against these attempts because in the end, I think it doesn't serve Lebanon's national interests as well to keep the borders uh, open or to keep the borders porous, especially as uh, keeping the borders in such a way could lead to some extremists or people from Al-Qaeda infiltrating into the Lebanese side. And that is something which some Lebanese officials themselves have expressed fears about. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said 46 people were killed today across various Syrian cities, mostly in Idlib. In Homs, Syrian army forces continue to surround the neighborhood of al khaladia as they shell other areas of the city. In the city of al qusair in the countryside of Homs, four regime soldiers were killed in armed clashes. It seems the countdown in the neighborhood of El Khaladiya has started. It is being shelled as it enters its ninth consecutive day of siege. The bombardment extended to other neighborhoods, leading to dozens getting killed and injured. Activists said army forces cleared a number of houses of their residents in Karmel Zaytun, then proceeded to burn these homes. As you can hear right now, shells and missiles and tanks, they're attacking the center. They are targeting the old city of Homs. They started this morning at 6 a.m. In the countryside of Damascus, the city of Al-Qusair witnessed a killing of a number of people. 
including regime soldiers and clashes. The neighborhoods of Al Arba'in and Al Hamadiya and Hama also continue to be shelled. A number of people were killed and injured in clashes between members of the Free Army and the regime's army. The town of As Samin in Idlib was also under attack, leading to the killing of a number of people, including children, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Villages in Latakia were also bombarded. A regime soldier was killed in the province of Dara, and four others were injured after a defected armed group opened fire on a vehicle transporting them near the village of Saida. Civilians were also killed in operations by the Syrian security forces in other areas. Activists said security forces targeted a vehicle with direct fire in Duma in the countryside of Damascus, killing two passengers and injuring two others. As for the latest development, it is the formation of a military council in Damascus and its countryside. I announced the formation of the military council in Damascus and its countryside. This council will support the work of the brigades of the Free Syrian Army in this area. Another massacre by armed terrorist groups. As for state-run media, it talks of armed terrorist groups. State TV described the latest attack as a massacre by an armed group in Homs. The station also interviewed witnesses who confirmed the presence of these groups and spoke of kidnappings and killings of civilians. The U.S. and Israel accept the massacre of these people. They say the army is killing them and is doing all these things. Enough already. My brother was kidnapped on February 23rd, and he has still not been returned. In Hama, crimes by armed terrorist groups continue. Syrian television broadcast a report on the uncovering of caches of arms, ammunition, and explosive devices in the city of Hama, which is being shelled. In the past two days, the neighborhoods of Al Maza, Al Kabun, and Birzeh in Damascus witnessed clashes between regime forces and army defectors. Explosions also took place in residential areas. Hayan Yakub, BBC. The attack on Bahraini child Ali El Sankis by regime forces sparked an angry wave of protests and condemnations across Bahraini cities and villages. The child was attacked with sharp tools as he was heading to school. Saudi-backed Bahraini forces failed to disperse angry demonstrators and were forced to retreat. In response, regime forces adopted a set of collective punishment measures which include filling residential neighborhoods with poisonous tear gas and attacking private properties. With these slogans, the people of Bahrain held their rallies in condemnation of the crackdown by Saudi-backed Bahraini forces. In the latest incident, Bahraini child Ali al-Sankis was attacked in the area of al sanabis The attack came one day after Bahraini King Hamad bin Isa received a report on the implementation of changes recommended by the fact-finding commission, and one day after he pledged to enact reforms, which the opposition slammed as an attempt by the regime to buy time. <laughs> These images show the Interior Ministry's militias attacking Bahraini child Ali al-Sankis with sharp tools as he headed to school. The incident provoked the wrath of the Bahraini public, sparking condemnation and angry demonstrations across various cities and villages throughout the kingdom. In the village of Diraz, Saudi-backed Bahraini forces failed to disperse the angry demonstrators and were forced to retreat. The confrontation escalated as regime forces were unable to storm the village. In response, those forces adopted collective punishment measures, which included filling the village with tear gas, as well as attacking and ransacking private property. Allah! 
May God bless the martyrs and prisoners. We will not surrender, bow down, or retreat. On another front, Bahraini citizens organize demonstrations in solidarity with the mothers of the martyrs in observance of Mother's Day. They renewed their commitment and oath to the martyrs' mothers, vowing to remain loyal to the martyrs and to honor their sacrifices. الاتهامات تسود الاجواء بين الخرطوم وجبه قبيل قمه دعا الجنوبيون الى عقدها في الثالث accusations are overshadowing the relationship between Khartoum and Juba ahead of a summit proposed by the southerners the summit which is scheduled for April 3rd will bring together Sudanese president Omar Hassan al-Bashir and his southern counterpart Salva Kiir Khartoum which has not yet responded to the invitation accused its southern neighbor of aiding armed rebels in the attack on the city of Hajhij in the state of South Kordofan South Sudan's army and the Northern Command of the People's Liberation Army denied the charge, saying it was calculated with the aim of raising pressure on Juba ahead of the talks. After a standoff between French police and Mohamed Mera, the young man suspected of killing seven people, Mera was killed. French police were not able to capture him alive. This was confirmed by police, saying its forces ended a 30-hour siege they imposed on the apartment in which the young French man of Algerian descent was entrenched. They slowly entered the apartment, taking cautious steps in fear of a trap. French police announced that three of its men were injured. The French interior minister said Mera threw himself out of a window in the apartment and died. We are joined by our correspondent, Mohamed Wamusi from Paris. Mohamed, is there any additional information on the death of Mohamed Mera? And how is the atmosphere in the surrounding area? The latest news is a statement by French Interior Minister Claude Guillaume, who reported the details of the last moments of Mohamed Mera's life. A few minutes ago, everyone in France was tuned into local television stations to follow the last minutes of the siege and the gunfire, before the authorities announced Mera's death and that three police officers were injured. Mohamed Mera was killed in a gunfire exchange as French police were raiding the apartment after they thought he committed suicide as her communication with him was cut off throughout the night. Mohamed Mera's death will certainly cause embarrassment for the French authorities, especially for President Sarkozy, who insisted that Mera will get captured alive to find out who is supporting him, amid speculations that a network of people stand behind him. His death will not help French police, especially when it comes to the details of other crimes he's been involved in. No. Police arrested his brother after finding explosives in his car, and they're also arresting his mother. Here at home, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today paid a condolence call to the home of the Sandler family that is mourning the death of Rabbi Jonathan Sandler and his two children, Arie, age six, and three-year-old Gabrielle, who were all murdered in the terrorist attack at the Jewish school in Toulouse on Monday. Following the visit, Netanyahu said that he had witnessed the sorrow of a life cut short and shattered hope. Netanyahu questioned what kind of barbarity and cruelty brings a man to commit such an inhumane act. According to Netanyahu, anti-Semites want to murder Jews wherever they are, and that is why the state of Israel was established. French ambassador to Israel, Christopher Bigot, joined Netanyahu at the Sandler home. Following the visit, Bigot said that France is determined to fight anti-Semitism and terrorism. And yesterday evening, Prime Minister Netanyahu and visiting French Foreign Minister Alain Juppé pledged to work together in that fight against terrorism. We must fight the extraordinary propaganda against Israel, against Jews everywhere, against the innocent that uh, is driving these people to commit these acts of savagery. I think on all this we stand together. And we are also completely committed, as they have said, in the fight against terrorism. It's a threat for, our, for you, it's a threat for us, uh, and uh, I think for the world. for the world, and we have also a complete solidarity in this fight. Thank you. <clears throat>
Defense Minister Ayoub Barak said Iran has not yet taken the final necessary steps to produce a nuclear weapon. Barak believes the threat of a military attack by the United States or another country has convinced Tehran to stop short of actually building an atomic bomb. The defense chief said that in the meantime, Iran is busy trying to make its nuclear facilities immune from attack. Barak told German television that 2012 is a highly important year for a possible military strike on Iranian nuclear sites. He added that such action is not a matter of weeks away, but it is not a matter of years away either. Peace Now today petitioned the Supreme Court to challenge the Supreme Court to challenge the deal reached between the government and residents of the illegal Migron outpost. At the same time, the government is trying to cancel demolition orders handed down by the court before the agreement was reached. More now from IBA's Aaron Viner. The legal saga over Migron entered a new phase today as the government proposed agreement came under examination by the high court. The government must convince the justices that it is able to implement the deal, which calls for the relocation of some 300 Migron residents to state-owned land in Kochav Yaakov by November 30th of 2015. If approved, the court must also cancel demolition orders of the outpost it issued in August of last year. Residents say that they had no choice but to sign the March 12th deal in order to prevent their forced removal and to avert civil war. While the settlers maintain that the land belongs to them, local Arabs say that they own the property despite their inability to prove their claims. The outpost was established in 1999 without official approval, just 14 kilometers from Jerusalem in the West Bank. Last September, the court ordered the demolition of three illegal structures at the outpost following a petition from the Yeshdin Human Rights Group. Opponents to the compromise deal say that documents submitted to the court prove that the government pressured Interior Ministry Planning Director Binat Schwartz to retract her original rejection of the proposed agreement in early February and approve it just one week later. It is also alleged that Schwartz, who is not authorized to deal with building projects in the West Bank, was initially involved in order to circumvent objections from Civil Administration Planning Head Shlomo Moskowitz, who told Civil Administration Director Modi Almoz that the government deal lacked planning feasibility. Schwartz maintains that her reversal came after the surfacing of new evidence. As the leftist Peace Now organization petitioned the court today to order the immediate evacuation of Migron, 33 judges lent their support by signing a statement calling for the deal to be overturned, warning that failure to do so would establish a dangerous precedent. For now, the fate of Israel's largest unauthorized settlement remains in the hands of the Supreme Court. At dawn, for the second time in two days, the Israeli occupation forces stormed the village of Nabi Saleh, northwest of Ramallah, where they raided and ransacked several homes and assaulted their occupants. They also seized equipment, computers, cell phones and documents. The information office of the Popular Resistance said the occupation forces seized four computers from the homes of prisoner Basim al-Tamimi and the local committee's coordinator, Naji al-Tamimi. The Israeli-based Betzalem Human Rights Organization said last year witnessed a sharp increase in the number of Israeli abuses compared to 2010. It added that 39 percent of settlement construction projects were concentrated in occupied Jerusalem. In contrast to 2010, last year witnessed a sharp rise in the number of people martyred across the various Palestinian provinces. The occupation forces killed 37 citizens in 2011, in contrast to 18 martyrs in 2010. The Israeli-based B'Tselem organization unveiled that most of the settlement construction projects launched by the Israeli government were concentrated in occupied Jerusalem, with 39 percent of the construction taking place on settlements established on land in the West Bank. These are massive and serious violations that amount to murder and war crimes. Israel continues to avoid accountability. I hope that 2012 and the years that follow will witness the trial of Israeli leaders, officials and anyone who issued orders to commit such crimes.
Regarding the prisoners issue, the report said the monthly average of children in detention this past year reached 200. Based on the records of military courts, the report said 650 lists of charges were issued against minors. The settlement campaign and the Israeli violations have been seriously escalating, and the international community can no longer ignore them, at least from a theoretical standpoint, such as expressing condemnation. Despite the 1979 High Court of Justice's ruling in the case of Elon More banning the confiscation of privately owned Palestinian land for the construction of settlements in the aftermath of the 1967 occupation, the Israeli authorities have seized 900,000 dunams for settlement construction. This figure represents a 170 percent increase in the total area of land seized in the West Bank prior to 1967. Israeli measures and practices in the territories of the West Bank continue to escalate. However, Arab nationalism and Palestinian aspirations are stronger than any conspiracy, and these measures are destined to prevail. From in front of one of the Israeli occupation checkpoints in the city of Ramallah, Ali Darar Ali, Palestine TV. The views expressed on Mosaic are from contributing broadcasters, not Link TV or its sponsors. The production of Mosaic is made possible by grants from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Winco Foundation, the Firedall Foundation, and by support of viewers like you. Thank you. Watch Mosaic World News online. Stay up to date with breaking news, read our blog, get transcripts of past shows and more at linktv.org slash mosaic. channel of uncompromising stories, world news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.